Yeah. Well, I got, a, I got a quick library story. Um, besides me helping take chewing gum off the floor once, uh, my family was in from Juneau, Alaska, and uh, the, the library brand new. And so the uh, grandchildren want to come down to the library and, of course, get books and all that kind of stuff. Well, I, I'm ready to check out the books, and then I realize I don't have a library card. <laughs> now, you're talking about being embarrassed. And then I, I, I at one time did, and I thought, please, show me a computer that I actually had a library card at one time. And, and they, they couldn't find anything. And so Mark had to come over and vouch for me my ID and, and to be able to get proper documentation done so I can get a library card. So it was a very special moment for my family to see the mayor totally embarrassed and uh, wondering what the world is going on. But I've got it, and I use it, Mark, and uh, you're right, it is a key to knowledge, and boy, this is, this is a place to get it. And one other quick story, we had the president of Ashton University in town, uh, it's been two years ago now, uh, because we're trying to get Ashton University to have a presence here in Grove City. And I, when I took a tour around town, the last place I came to was the library. He says, Mayor, let me tell you something. This is such a statement. If there was any way we could build a university or at least one building in Grosley, Ohio, it would be right down here by your library. And you, you've made quite a statement as a community to have this facility. Uh, we're still working on it. The COVID doesn't help. But uh, it's, a, it's those things that it just make such a tremendous difference in our, in our community. And thank you to the Board of Trustees for, for being patient, many meetings, much discussion. But it's been worth it, and Mark has been our, our primary driver, and we're, we're very, very appreciative. And the other point about the condolences to you and your family with, with all you had to go through uh, in the last uh, month or so. But I have been a proclamation. Uh, you can't let anybody leave their job without getting a, uh, a good proclamation from the mayor. And this thing has multiple dates on it. Uh, one of the few that uh, you got to make sure you read it carefully. Uh, but whereas it's a great honor to celebrate Mark on the occasion of the retirement from the University of Public Library after the Southwest Public Library after 35 years of dedicated service. Whereas in January 1986, Mark began his career as a tra treasurer, where his hard work and knack for numbers led to his promotion to fiscal officer, uh, which was until 2002, when he was promoted to director of the Southwest Public Library. And this is one thing that really I, I lost track of. Uh, I had noted here the second largest system in Franklin County, uh, which is pretty remarkable. And whereas Mark worked diligently to get a levy passed in 2010, renewed during the 2020 pandemic, his leadership was essential in the design and construction of the new Grove State Library. Now therefore, in honor of Mark's retirement, I hereby proclaim January the 29th, not today, January 29th is retirement day. And, and uh, declare that day as a Mark Shaw day in the city of Grove City and extend our best wishes for a long and happy retirement. So this is dated December the 29th. Today is what, uh, November or January the 19th and the retirement is the uh, 29th. So all these make sense. And certainly Mark, it's going to be your day, all your day. Uh, but especially the day in January the 29th. When it comes to that does not mean to get out of jail free or uh, you get a free ride on the parking ticket. Good day to you. And from the, probably the first week after I moved here, I brought my kids here. Actually, I only had one at the time. And I've told this story before, but when I first brought them into the old library site, I was hugely disappointed. I was like, wow, this is the city's library. It's gonna be a hard place for me to live. Um, it's kind of old. It's hard to find books. It doesn't have these great, you know, play places. So I take my kids down to the Columbus Library, and I can tell you, by the time we built this new library, I was very sad when we had to move here. Um, into this incredibly beautiful building because a library is so much more than its four walls. It's the people who inhabit it, the librarians who are always there to say hello when you walk in the door. It's the director who puts his heart and soul into it. So 
We are extraordinarily fortunate here in Grove City and at Westland to have had you as our library director. Um, my path has crossed tremendously um, frequently with the library from the time I started um, bringing my kids here. I got them involved in the first levy. It was kind of um, possibly my um, political baptism was getting involved in that levy and um, having to work with Jeff Davis at the time and all the other people who were part of that. But also, um, having written um, three books while living here in Grove City and having the enormous help of Beth Ann Johnson, and there's my co-author over there, Janet Shaler, um, and getting intertwined on that level was eye-opening because uh, I can't imagine we could have ever gotten this, the books done without um, the Addicts to Archives um, um, support material, as well as just the general research um, support that everyone here provided. So I've been extremely fortunate that my path has crossed <coughs> so many times. And I'm going to miss, and you're very welcome to come down to the State House if we ever have those meetings again to tag along <laughs> and to talk about the budget, because I know that Senator Coonsy and I will always advocate for libraries because we know their importance in a community. And, and now that this new building is here, one of my um, favorite parts is walking out through that door and seeing the dedication and to see my name on there as a city council member, to know that I had a part of it makes me feel so good. So I can't even imagine how you must feel when you drive by here and take a moment to look at the building and to think, wow, you know, for the rest of your life, you will be able to look at that building, this building, and to know that you had such an important impact in the number of lives that you have, have affected by um, being a true public servant and dedicating your lives, your life to the improvement of others. So thank you very much. I have a commendation. Um, I will say that um, unlike the mayor, I can memorize, I know my library card number by heart. I know my three kids' library numbers by heart. Um, I, I completely um, appreciate the fact that you all have access to everything that is here and that you have been a steward of that. So on behalf of Speaker Bob Cup and myself, we have a um, commendation for you to recognize your 35 years of service and your dedication and your trips down to the State House to bleed for state funds as they get tighter and tighter it seems, but that we will always be committed to you. So thank you for everything that you have done for us, and here is our commendation. Thank you. Senator Quincy. Thank you very much for inviting me to the library board um, for making sure that I was included because it is a great honor to be here today, Mark, to celebrate um, your career. Um, the mayor and uh, Rep. Lanise really highlighted, I think, um, just what it takes, I think, to build a community. Um, and obviously our libraries are such an integral part of that. And as Rep. Lanise said, it's not just the four walls, it's not just this beautiful building and the renovations at Westland. It's, it's really the people with the vision and the commitment and the passion um, to see those types of projects through. So I am here um, on behalf of the Ohio Senate to thank you also for your advocacy and state and coming down and, and advocating for state funding. Um, as Rep. Lee said, uh, we've been very committed. We, we know the work um, that goes into um, to, to, to running a library and to really serving um, our communities through, uh, through having this public service. But, I think during this past year especially, we've really seen um, in just many different ways uh, where our state funding is having a great return on investment, maybe in some other way, ways where it's not. And I will say that our libraries have stepped up and they have served in such a difficult year. Um, and so we're really grateful that uh, the money that we have put into the budget has been utilized by uh, such great stewards as yourself and of, of, of uh, Southwest in general um, to, to our communities during, especially, like I said, during a difficult time. A difficult time for you to be retiring. We will miss you very much. And again, I echo uh, Rep. Lanise's uh, statements. Please come down and, and visit us anytime at the State House. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you, um, I'm sure, still here to some degree um, as well. But um, on behalf of the State Senate and myself, uh, we're grateful for your years of service. And uh, just thank you again for congratulating you on your retirement. Thank you so much, Senator. In 2008, Mark decided to take me on as the library manager at the Westland Area Library, for which I'm appreciative and grateful. Um, but mostly over those years, 
It has been just an honor and a privilege to work with him to make Westland Area Library just the best uh, library it could be, from projects that existed only on paper to projects that touched maybe the shelving or the, the interior of the building, the public desks, to the great big uh, youth services expansion that, was, that took place and uh, polished off in 2019. It has been just an exciting ride during that time. So thanks, Mark, for everything. Your, uh, your mark is deep on Southwest Public Libraries and especially at Westland. Thanks so much. Thank you. We have been through wars together. A few. Yeah, a few. Um, Mark and I have known each other so long that we started working together before either one of us had children. And my son is 33 and the father of a 13-month-old uh, now. And Mark's son is grown and married. And um, it's kind of amazing to think that we were um, younger than they are now when we started working together. So um, I, there's so many things I could say. Um, but a few things that come to mind. Um, Mark, before he was the director, was always, um, he always had a sense of duty and responsibility. And I know you've mentioned this lots of times about his physical responsibility, but um, behind the money part um, for Mark is always the people. And um, I can say he cares about the staff in both buildings so much. And every decision that he made that impacted us um, either brought him joy or pain. Um, and I remember that, and um, it's a hard thing to celebrate, but not everybody has the opportunity to work for somebody who cares so much. So, thank you for that. Um, Mark and I were grad school partners, um, slogging through um, being working parents and working full-time jobs and um, going to school before you could actually do it online. We drove back and forth to um, Ohio State um, and um, commiserated and urged each other on and got, got through all of that together, and I appreciate that. Um, in the old building, I think Mark and I went through two complete um, building recarpeting projects together where we moved every single item in that building. <laughs> from one place to the other and while the building was open. Um, so yeah, I think that prepared us to take this project on, which was the project of a lifetime, truly. And I am blessed that I got to take part of that um, from, from beginning to opening. So um, thank you for that. And oh, I can't remember what else I should say so much. Mark has always provided me wise counsel and a listening ear and um, always had an open door for, I think, anyone who wanted to talk to him. And um, thank you for being there always when I needed someone. And I am so happy that you have reached this point in your career because I know how excited you are about it. I'm sad for um, SPL and the staff and all of the community, but you deserve this. You have worked so hard. So. Um, I'm going to stop now because I didn't even realize I was going to speak until about quarter till two. So I'm sure I'm just rambling, but um, thank you from the bottom of my heart for all you've done for me and for the people who work in this library at Grove City Library. Um, you've made us all better people. Thank you. Thank you. As a member of the Friends Board for uh, the last eight years and uh, in leadership for uh, over half of that time, I've had the privilege of working closely with Mark Shaw. I've always been impressed with the smooth and efficient operation of the libraries and Mark's genuine personality. His hard work and his dedication to SPL and the library communities as well as his great working relationship with the friends in the library. Mark's analytic skills, people skills, and his experience serving as SPL treasurer, operations manager, and director prepared Mark for the challenges, changes, and opportunities
presented to him in 35 years at SPM. Mark succeeded through the evolution of computers and emergence of information technology, weathering economic downturns, and spearheading expanded library space in both facilities and like levy passages. Mark is leading Southwest Public Libraries in a strong position. The friends of uh, the library appreciate Mark's considerable accomplishments. We congratulate him on his well-deserved retirement and wish him much good fortune and blessings on the next chapter of his life. We anticipate interacting with Mark as a patron and friend of the library, as well as a history consultant. The friends are honoring Mark in two ways. Uh, we will, he's going to have his picture taken on Wednesday, and uh, there will be an 11 by 14 inch portrait of Mark uh, in each library with an identifying plaque. Also, there is a treasure chest filled with items that are based on Mark's interests and tastes. There are three books on Native Americans. Um, two of them are about the Shawnee uh, people and their diaspora and resilience through adversity. One book is on Tecumseh and the Prophet. And nestled in the chest are several lemon-flavored snacks. <laughs>
out the man. I have a picture of him if you'd like to see. He's very large. He stands up about wow. almost 30 inches. And he's, he's a gorgeous specimen. I'll put it up here. Uh, board President Jan Shaler, uh, the rest of the SPL board members, uh, friends, uh, Laura Harper and uh, Carol Roy, how can I forget your name, Carol? And all of our great staff members, thank you so much for coming today. Um, so I'll move quickly down the list of everything I need to say for, to everyone. First of all, uh, for Representative Lenise and Senator Kunze. Every two years, of course, as you well know, the state of Ohio does its budget and we come down there and tell you how you need to prioritize libraries over everything else in the state of Ohio. <laughs> um, and OLC, the Ohio Library Council, prepares us for this for months in advance with talking points and, you know, on and on and on. And they get to me and I remind them that Representative Lenise and Senator Kunze are our reps and they say, oh, well, we don't have to worry about them, they're great. Uh, and it's true. Um, it hasn't always been that way. Sometimes we've had senators and representatives who I think had never been to a library. <laughs> and these two are super avid library fans and they love SBL. And they've shown that over and over in the time I've worked with them. Senator Kunze has been at Westland to do a story time. Uh, Laura, of course, is, I think, a permanent fixture here at, at Grove City uh, for many different reasons and projects she works on. So for all of your support all through the years in helping us and keeping us alive, you have my heartfelt thanks. You've been absolutely wonderful to work with. Um, this guy over here, he first came to see me in 1988. I had a lot more hair. Um, talk about a new growth city library. Because, uh, as uh, Representative Lenise, Lenise mentioned, that old location on Park Street was pretty dismal. Uh, it was not a well designed building. Um, the contractor went bankrupt during construction and the bonding company had to finish it and it was just um, an entire laundry list of problems with that building and it was not a great place to serve the public. So uh, if you want to know who the first person in Grove City that recognized that and wanted to change it, he's sitting right there. Uh, and over the years, we had lots of discussions. When I tell you lots, except that. There were many meetings. Uh, some of them got a little intense at times. Uh, there were meetings with council that didn't go well. And there were plans that came and went. And through it all, Ike and also city administrator Chuck Bozo stuck with it. Uh, and we are in this building right now because of those two because they would not give it up. Um, during the whole acrimonious process to get to the point of construction, Chuck would call me at random hours of the day and night on my cell phone. And he would simply say, we are going to build that library. And then he would hang up. That's all he would say. He didn't say, hi, this is Chuck. He'd just say, we're going to build that library. And then he would hang up. He must have done that 25 times. So without those guys, we would not be here. And I thank you, Mr. Mayor. You've done so much for Grove City, and especially for Southwest Public Libraries and Grove City Library. During this horrible mess we've been living through, the city has also made sure that we got $100,000 of CARES Act money to mitigate expenses related to COVID. So their partnership with us did not end at this building, but it continues. And, and we love being a part of Grove City, and thank you. Um, next up, Board of Trustees. Um, 
I've worked with a lot of board members over the years, and I'm not saying it just because they're sitting here. These are these is the best group that I've ever worked with. They are they are great. A lot of people do not know that they receive no compensation whatsoever for their time. We're not even allowed to spend library money on their refreshments. Friends of the library have to buy their refreshments. So they get nothing of value for their service. They are true volunteers. And uh, it has been a pleasure to work with every one of them. Uh, Donna was the uh, president over the last couple of years. We had the levy renewal. Um, and um, we've, I've worked with her as we've worked through the last year in dealing with this difficult time. So to the Board of Trustees, I say thank you so much for your help and support uh, over the years. Um, through thick and thin, I mean, there have been some real low points uh, over the last 35 years. Uh, so I appreciate your friendship and support more than you ever know. Uh, Carol Rorick resuscitated and brought the friends back from dead. They were all but dead, and Carol brought them back through determination and hard work and never stopping in her efforts to revive that organization. And they're so important to us. They play such an important role when we run levies or renewal levies or when we need to buy prizes for some reading club and we can't use tax money for that. So thank you, Carol. Thank you for all of your hard work in, in bringing the friends back and making them a vibrant and viable organization once again. I appreciate it. Um, Laura, yeah, Laura, there's my friend Laura Harper. I first met her shortly after I came to the library. Um, if there was a, ever an award for ultimate all-time friend of the library, it goes to Laura Harper. Uh, when you enjoy the beauty of Harper's Grove in the Youth Services Department, it's because of Laura. Uh, she gave us money for that. She has funded the Harper Scholarship, which has helped a lot of our employees get through graduate school. Uh, and just numerous gifts and contributions to the friends and to the library. And for those of you who don't know it um, and haven't seen it, check out the uh, Women's Civic Club reading room upstairs. You'll see a portrait of a lovely young lady. She's Irene Harper. And Irene was our first director in 1924. So uh, Laura's connection to the library is deep and long. And I thank you for your friendship and support over the years, Laura. The contribution of Mountain Man to the library is incredible. And I will be forever grateful that you uh, gave that gift to the library in honor of Beth Ann and my retirement. Thank you so much. Who else? My assistant directors. Um, these guys are incredible. All of the staff here is incredible, but I worked most closely with the assistant directors. Um, they can handle the nitty gritty of the patron complaints and the day to day stuff and let me worry about funding and other larger organizational matters. And I couldn't have done it without them. Um, Michelle does a wonderful job at Westland uh, in that community, and of course Beth Ann. I've known you as long as I've known anybody around. Um, my respect for Beth Ann will always be undying, and I, to this day, I do not know how she did it. I turned over moving the Grove City Library from Park Street to here to her. She literally moved an entire library uh, from there to here. So um, you have my eternal gratitude for that. I still don't know how you did it. So anyway. And then finally, uh, staff. Uh, I've said this in my numerous reports. Um, the accomplishments over the last 35 years are not mine alone. Everybody that I've mentioned in this room, uh, no one person can do everything alone. Uh, and the 
best asset of this library system is not Westland Library or Grove City Library. It's these staff members you see standing at the back of the room who are dedicated public servants, and they work hard every day to provide the best public service possible to our patrons. And Beth Ann will attest to this. Anytime somebody came to me with an idea, it always had to pass the test, how does this improve the lives of our patrons? Uh, because that's why we're here. They pay the bills, and that's why we're here. So uh, to the staff, I say thank you from the bottom of my heart for the fabulous job you have done. I've worked with hundreds of them over 35 years, and they've, they've just been wonderful, and they make SPL what it is. And I, will, I will end with um, one thought. One of, the, one of the most asked questions I've ever had is, how do you work with all those people? <laughs> I get it all the time. And I don't get it because I've spent my entire career working in places that were dominated by women. And it, I don't even think about it never even crosses my mind that there would be. But I will leave you with this thought. Don't let anybody ever tell you that women aren't as smart or smarter, as hardworking, as innovative, and as creative as men. Because they are. So don't let anybody tell you spent my entire career working around mostly women, and they've been fabulous to work with. So, with that, I thank you all so much. Um, uh, one final thought, Carol Rourke is the only person in the world that could convince me that I have to go sit for a portrait. <laughs> so, it's a good thing that you were elected to come to me with that, Carol, because I apparently they knew, but I can't tell you no. So that's so. There's that. But anyway, thank you all so much. Um, thank you for helping to make my career here enjoyable. Uh, and I'll always love SBL, and I'll be around as a patron, but. I've already told the incoming director that once I hand everything off to her, I'm done. Uh, it's hers. So uh, I'm not going to be one of those uh, people that hangs around sticking my nose in all the time. It's, it's going to be hers, and I'll just strictly be around as a patron. So anyway, thank you all so much for coming. Um, it's been a terrible last year. Um, We've spent our entire careers working to make libraries accessible and fun places to hang out, and then we have to tell everybody that you can't come here and hang out until the pandemic is over. So uh, I would have liked to have gone out without having to deal with this mess, but um, we don't get our we don't often get our what we would like. So anyway, thank you all again. Uh, I'm so appreciative of all of your work here and everything that you, the kind words that you said, and with that, I say farewell.